Okay, Rosalind Fraken was an English chemist. She was also an X-ray crystallographer who was famous for her role in the discovery of DNA and for the introduction of the use of X-ray diffraction. In 1946, that's been taught X-ray diffraction, her discovery of the structure of DNA started to bloom. Years later, after talk, taking um, pictures of DNA using the machine, Franklin herself improved. Paragraph 51 became famous as evidence in identifying the structure of DNA. This was famous um, as scientists Francis Crick and Maurice Wilkins had used this photo on, as a basis of the DNA model without her credit, which led to both of them winning the Nobel Prize. Though their DNA model was widely applauded, most of the findings were based on Rosalind's original work, thus the Nobel Prize should have originally gone to Rosalind. Now, I actually won 100%. This is probably out of all of the stolen ideas. I think this is perhaps the most heinous of crimes, but you, know, you guys might be able, you might differ. Rosalind Franklin, is, firstly, X-ray diffraction is using X-rays to look at crystals. And I personally find this stuff really interesting and incredibly difficult. I've, I've actually had the pleasure of actually doing a little bit of the math that's linked to, um, to extra diffraction. It's confusing as hell. And if you think about the pictures, the pictures are not going to come out super nice. So the fact that she was able to get decent pictures and sort of start to interpret what they mean is massively impressive. Then the fact that this was idea was stolen by these two gentlemen. But when I say stolen, they used it but didn't credit her. And then they go on to win not just any old prize, not just any old grant, but perhaps the most famous uh, possible prize you can win for being a scientist, the Nobel Prize, and she doesn't get mentioned. Well, the theory, of course, is why? Well, because they're probably because they're like, well, she's a woman, maybe because they thought, well, we don't need to credit her. She just took the photo. It's not like she did anything for it. It's like... Whereas nowadays, it's like we now have a very strict policy of if you do something, you need to credit them. Even if you're like a musician and you borrow someone else's music, you need to credit them. You always need to credit the people you do. So yeah, I actually fully agree with this person's findings. So I reckon she should have maybe not won it before instead of them, but maybe she should have been awarded the Nobel Prize with them, or worst case scenario, she should have at least been mentioned by the Nobel Prize committee. But this is one of the reasons that Rosalind Franklin is, out of all the stolen ideas, people, I think she's one of the ones that we get, talk, that we spend a lot of time talking about because she pops up. She's one of the uh, women in science that kind of helped us understand DNA. And so whenever you look at the DNA structure, whenever you look at the DNA model, you know, I want you guys to think, it's like, well, who was the first person that, that took a photo of DNA? And that was Rosalind Franklin. Um, let's talk about today's lesson, measuring circuits. We will learn how voltage and current are measured in circuits. So where does this link to the stuff that we were doing last lesson? Last lesson, we were talking about parallel circuits and how we can find out the current and voltage drops over different parts of the parallel circuit, which is fine. But we could have, instead of spending so much time finding the current through here, we could instead use an electronic device that would measure the current so we don't have to do these calculations. And that's what we're going to talk about today. What is this electronic device that we could use? Before we do that, I actually want to spend a little bit more time talking about this idea here. This is the same picture that I gave you guys as part of the attendance question. We've already just worked out that we've got 12 volts here. Uh, let me do that in blue. We already worked out that we've got 12 volts here and we've got a loss of 12 volts here. If I named, let me just do this really quickly for you. If I named this A and B, we could already do this. We could already say, well, voltage A is 12, voltage B is 12, voltage total is 12. We could even do, we can't, we could do, we can't do the current A, we can't do the current for B, but guess what? We can do the total current, that's two amps. Normally what I would do in this is I get you guys to give me a lot more input, but I want to make sure that we get all of the lesson completed. So that's why we're going to do 
I'm just going to do most of this stuff for you guys. Now the resistance, we know the resistance through, we don't know the resistance through A, we do know the resistance through B though, that's 30. And then we've got the total resistance. We don't know what the total resistance is either. So can I get you guys, this is the one thing I am going to ask you guys, what would be the next thing we would work out? What would be the next thing that makes logical sense to figure out next? I'm going to look in chat and hopefully you guys can give me an answer. What's the next thing we should work out? Now that we've extracted all the information from this question, what can we calculate next? What do you guys think? I B, yeah. Hmm? No, I do not know where Mr. Effort is, sorry. I B, so how do we calculate I B? So the trick with calculating I B is to go V equals I R. Now we want to know VB equals IB times RB. Now we want to know IB. So we're going to rearrange this. VB divided by RB is going to give me IB. What is IB? Well, VB is 12, RB is 30. 12 over 30 equals 0.4. I'm pretty sure. I'm going to grab my calculator just to double check because I've had, I've made silly mistakes like that in the past. So, um, and I don't want to make a silly mistake right here. So zero point four amps. So we're going to shove that right here where we've got IB zero point four amps. Now, if we know that two amps goes here, we know that zero point four amps goes here. We can actually work out what this value here is. Can I get a suggestion in chat? What do you guys think that these uh, IA is. What do you guys think the current to the top wire is? I want you to use the information that we've got. I'm going to give you guys a second to work that out. What do you need Mr. Radford for? Okay. What do you work with? Um, relativity? No, 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 no. That's not my work. My week is um, field. Okay. I don't think he's here today though. I'm not even sure. But yeah, go knock on his office and see if he's there. Uh, well then I don't think he's here today. All right, anyway, okay, IA is 1.6. Thank you very much. That is correct. This is 1.6 amps. The reason this is 1.6 amps is because, again, we're going to use our tic-tac-toe method, which would say that this line is going to be the next line we need to work out. Now, if we know that uh, if we've got zero, 2 amps going in, it has to split. If 0.4 going down, the 1.6 must be going up. That gives us this value here, 1.6 amps. Now, all, I actually have everything I need to calculate RA and hence figure out what X is. Because I can just use V equals IR. I'm going to do this in the bottom corner here. V equals IR. We've got R equals V divided by I, which is going to be... 12 divided by 1.6. And 12 divided by 1.6 is 7.5 ohms. Now what I always love to do at this point is just to double check to see if this makes sense. Okay, how do I check to make this, make sure this makes sense? What I would do is I look at this. This is a really, this is a high voltage. So it makes sense that this line up here must be the path of least resistance. Let's check to see if it is. The path of least resistance 7.5 compared to 30, yeah, this path here is a lot easier. So therefore you would expect more current to go down here. Now I'm not going to go through RT. We could actually, you know what? We'll do RT really quickly. RT, RT is going to be VT divided by IT is going to be 12 divided by 2, which is going to be 6 ohms. Perfect. So that gives us a, a thing. I always find this interesting that the total resistances are less than each of the individual resistors. I just, and that's, um, there's a reason for that. And it's just because ultimately, if there's, as long as you've got more paths for the electrons to go down. So that's just a quick um, touch here. You don't have to copy this down. Um, I just thought I would show you guys this is a little bit of a bonus sort of thing. And also because we'd already done half this question. So let's talk about now what the point of the lesson is, which is measuring circuits.
So when we talk about measuring circuits, we usually talk about it using two, um, two different devices. The first of, and we're going to talk about both of these devices over the next two or three slides. The first device that we use is called a voltmeter. Guess what a voltmeter measures? It measures the voltage. Voltmeter, voltage. Perfect. We can also use an ammeter. What does an ammeter measure? The ammeter measures the current. Ammeter current. And of course, you should also be um, acutely, there is also one extra thing which is called a multimeter, but we don't use multimeters. Um, you guys probably have never used a multimeter before, but multimeters can measure, uh, measures, they measure lots of um, properties. So why we like multimeters is multimeters can measure voltage, current, and even resistance. So yeah, so this is just um, what we've got here for uh, voltage and current. I'm gonna keep this up for about 30 seconds and then I'm gonna change the slide and we're gonna to start to talk about voltmeters. I don't know what I'm doing this slideshow. Yeah, I use the same slideshow over and over again. I do fix it though from time to time. Some errors. I remember I'm not so talking about only handed only handed one. Mm, well, some students have only handed in one time, so I'm hoping they can keep up. I'm gonna, I'm not doing that. All right, ladies and gents, let's keep going. So let's look at the ammeter first. An ammeter is connected in series in the circuit. Now remember what that means. I'm going to show you what a picture of that means, but we're just going to start with this fact: connected in series. We're also going to talk about why it's connected in series in a fraction of a second. It has super low resistance. And you might ask yourself, why does it have super low resistance? It's so that it doesn't affect the circuit. If you can imagine, if, you're, if you have a ammeter, something that measured the circuit, and it's like, oh, it has really high resistance, then it would actually act as a resistor, it would change the path of least resistance, that would completely ruin the, the whole thing that you're measuring. So we want to make sure it's got as low a voltage as a lower resistance as possible. So that's what an ammeter is. This here is the symbol for an ammeter. It's just an A inside of a circle. Nothing special here. That's and you can put as long as it's connected in series, so in that one after the other, we're pretty fine. I'm going to change the slide in about 10, 15 seconds. If you need me to go a bit slower. Throw up in chat that you need me, that you want me to slow down a bit. Otherwise, I'm just going to keep going at this pace. We don't have to go tomorrow, what? No. What's going on tomorrow? It's grand final day. Oh, yeah, shit. Shit. Oh, shit. Shit. Okay. Actually, I'm just going to get stuck there. That's right. So, that's right. Okay. So, let's have a look. How do we connect up an ambient event? So how do we connect it on our meter? And our meter gets connected up like so. And I'm going to keep this. So if you want to connect an our meter in a series circuit, you would connect it like this. As you can see, this is a series circuit. Why is it a series circuit? Because um, we've got one, then we hit two, then we hit three. We actually go through each of the three things. Not only is this a series circuit, but this is actually connected in series. It's like a third light bulb. You can think about it like that. As for in parallel, we've done this. So, so if you look here, the current has to go through this light bulb and then through the ammeter. And this one has to go through this light bulb and through the ammeter. And that allows us to calculate the um that allows us to calculate the, um, the current through the ammeter. Now you could put the ammeter here. There's actually nothing wrong with putting the ammeter here. And that would actually be really interesting because this would tell you I total. This will tell you the total current. Whereas if you put an ammeter here, this will tell you the I A. This will tell you the current through A or this resistor or it will just tell you the current through this wire, which might be useful because if you know the total current, you know the current through this wire, you can calculate the current through the bottom wire. So that's just how you would measure a circuit here. Um, I haven't actually got, I haven't actually forced you guys to copy this slide down, 
Um, so you don't have to worry about copying it down if you don't want to, but I'm going to put this here because, and this should help you because with um, because I've got some questions like this on electronics three. So the next worksheet, I'm not going to hand that out yet. Don't worry if you're sitting there being like, oh my god, I haven't even finished electronics one and two. Well, don't worry, I'm not going to give it out yet. But this is going to design to help you out. So hopefully, if you're a bit confused, you can come back to this slide later on and see. Let's move away from amp meters or ammeters and talk about voltmeters now. And we're going to talk a bit, we're going to talk about both of them in a second, but we're going to talk about voltmeters for a sec. So measuring voltage. Now, when you measure voltage, it's a bit different. With measuring voltage, a voltmeter is connected in parallel. So instead of in series, it's connected in parallel. And it has, instead of having a low resistance, it has a really high resistance to limit the current flow through the voltmeter. Ultimately, if we're connecting something in parallel, we want virtually no current to go through this at all. We want like, if we draw this by drawing green, the current, we want all of the current to go this way. We want barely any of it to go up and through the voltmeter. So therefore we want a lot and a lot and a lot, most of the current to be going down the bottom here. I'm going to keep this up for about maybe another 30 seconds, uh, maybe about, maybe more, maybe about 45 seconds in case, just to get this copied down. And then we'll move on to how does a voltmeter look like in, in a circuit? High resistance equals high power. It does, yes. yes. And then high, yeah. but, high um, amps. Mm. <clears throat> so the main reason we care about the main reason we care about this is because it's yeah, we want to make sure that we don't like we, we don't want it to interrupt the circuit. Yeah. I actually have some issues though. I've been teaching these guys about um, power loss and stuff like that. I'm trying to work out how to explain um oh. I don't know, I don't talk about power loss, but I think there's this one idea that I get confused about, which is like, if you split the current mm -hmm. in a parallel circuit, won't that also split? That'll mean there was a lower current for each light bulb, which means there's going to be a lower power loss. So, but then the light bulbs are brighter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Anyway. All right, ladies and gents. So how does these look in two circuits? So in the one on the left, uh, don't ask why that actually came up a bit slow. The one on the left, we're measuring the voltage. We're actually measuring the voltage drop over this resistor, this light bulb here. Now, as I said, it's the the because it's in parallel, the the uh, current can go either up or across. But because this is such a high resistance, it's got a big resistance. Most of our current's going to go this way. But because uh, we know, if you guys remember, if I have a 12 volt battery, right? Let me go back to this idea here. If I have a 12 volt battery. And I've got two wires. I can know that 12 volts is going to get dropped here and 12 volts is going to get dropped here. So if I know that 6 volts is getting dropped here or something, then I know that six volts is going to get dropped over the voltmeter, and that's what I'm going to measure as the voltage. So it allows me to measure this voltage drop. I can do the same thing with a parallel circuit. Um, notice that I'm going around this resistor here. So again, the, most of the current is going to go this way, but some of it will go through the voltmeter. So that's how you would connect these things up in either series or parallel. Again, you don't need to copy this down because you've already, as long as you keep this idea. The parallel just means you're going around the resistor. Um, and that's what you would do with the voltmeter. Whereas, of course, if we wanted to connect an amp meter, we have to connect it in series, straight after the thing that we're measuring. So um, let me just quickly check. OK, um, yeah, we'll talk about that. OK, cool, cool, cool. I'm not going to go that far. So the next thing I'm going to talk to you guys about, we've only got about two or three more slides left, is I'm going to talk to you guys about how to read an ammeter. Now these are the old-fashioned ammeters. Now mo modern-day ones, 
we will be using um, if we come to school, if you guys we do do some experiments. That doesn't matter. We they haven't got a camera on. No camera it doesn't matter. So no. So um, sorry. So the old-fashioned ammeters are the ones that you guys probably used in year nine, and these are these are still useful. They're still usable, but we tend to use digital volt digital multimeters nowadays because it means that you get numbers instead of these general scales here. I've got a, um, now this is actually one of the, a famous sort of problem here. What do you guys think, I'm gonna ask this to chat, and if you wanna say out loud, then you're more than welcome to, um, unmute yourself and say it. What do you guys think the current is through the circuit that this is attached to? If I say this is attached to a circuit, maybe it's attached to a wire and a parallel circuit. What is the current through that wire? I want you to give me a guess of what you guys think. I've got one guess. I want to get maybe, let's say, five guesses before I move on. I've got one guess. Give me a couple more. You guys should just be able to read it off the ammeter, so you should be able to tell me what is the current. I've got... Two guesses. Let's get, I want to get five. I've got three. Let me get a couple more guesses. Two of them are the same, one of them is different. Um, and Eric, you're the first person that's um, done it out loud, which, is, which means I can say your name. Can I get a couple more? Yep. Another guess, five. Um, that person who submitted it put a question mark, so they're not very confident. And we can get one more guess. What do you guys think? Is anyone going to guess 10? Does anyone think it's 10? It has to be 10 amps. Or is there anyone that's like something else? One more guess. Come on, guys. Come on, Dylan. Who else have I got here? Oliver, Everest. Give it a guess. You don't have to be, you don't have to get it correct. You can even do it privately and no one needs to know that you got it wrong. I won't embarrass you. Um, Kevin, you can guess. Jake, give me a guess. What do you guys think? What is this? What do you think the current is? What is this arrow pointing at? Or Ryan? Anyone? Thank you. One more guess. Yep. Yeah. Yep, beautiful, thank you. All right, I got two more guesses, thank you, we've got six. So the answer to this, what value is this pointing at? The answer to this is five amps. Now, if you grab a look at this, you can actually see there are three numbers here. There's a one, there's a five, and there's a 10. And the question is, is like, how do I know which one it is? The Because it could be any of these things. Normally, when you've got a clock, the clock points to one number, seven, so you know it's seven o'clock. But you know, what, but there are three numbers here, so how do you know which one it is? The reason we know it's five is because it's plugged into the number five here. That's why. So that means when it's plugged into the number five, we use the five scale. That means if the, if the arrow was pointing, I don't know, say over here, we'd say that that is two amps because it's, we're looking at the middle scale. The reason we're looking at the middle scale is because we're plugged into the middle um, value here. If we were plugged into, let's say, what would happen if we were plugged into a different one? What would happen if we were plugged into, say, I don't know, this, this 10, the 10 one? Well, then I'd say it's 10 amps. And then if you were pointing over here, and instead of saying that's two, I'd say, no, 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 that's four, because we're using the bottom scale. So the trick with reading an ammeter is first to look at the, first to look at what you're plugged into, so you know if you're using the top scale, the bottom scale, the middle scale, or the bottom scale. So that's how you can read an ammeter. Now there is an extra little thing here. Also, I would love you guys to, the reason I've got a pencil here is because I want you guys to copy something down. Uh, I'd like you to copy this down. You don't have to copy it down necessarily 100% beautiful like this. All I, I don't, all I really want is something like this. 
maybe one, two, three, four, five, five, five. And then maybe we'll just do two scales here. Two, four, six, eight, ten. And then what we'll do is we'll put an arrow here and we'll go with negative one, five, ten. Yeah, that's the negative, by the way, but you know. And so this is all you need to draw. It's still a lot of to draw, I get that, but it's not too much. So now here's one of the questions, right? Is this accurate? Now, a lot of people straight say, yeah, sure, this is pointing to five. Um, this is pointing to five. That means that this has to be five amps. But the question is, does it have to be five amps? The answer is no. I'm going to talk to you guys about why, because this is one of the facts that I think a lot of people don't understand about scales. Let me show you, let me talk about an example, right? Let's say that I got a bathroom scale, right? And I got this bathroom scale can measure from zero kilograms to we'll go with maybe 200 kilograms. Yep. And so I've got this big dial here. And it, yeah. And let's just say what I do is I get uh, the, other, the example I'm going to do here is I'm going to get an elephant. I'm going to get this massive elephant. And what this massive elephant is going to do, that's actually a pretty good elephant. I'm pretty impressed with that. What that massive elephant is going to do is it's going to stand on the scale. What do you know? When that massive, massive, huge zoo elephant stands on the scale, it actually comes out as saying it's 200 kilograms. This is a pretty light elephant. You guys see any, can you guys tell me in chat, what do you guys think the problem with this is? What is the issue of this? It is maxed out. You and perfect. You know, you couldn't have said that any better than that. You, the scale is maxed out. What the term maxed out is, if you don't know what it is, is the scale can only measure between zero and 200 kilograms. So if you put something more than 200 kilograms, guess what? You're not going to know what it is. What does this have to do with our picture here? Looking at this picture here, we can see that the arrow is pointing to five. And yeah, sure, that's great, but this is actually the maximum value. So the question is, is this five amps or is it more? Great. You don't actually know. The best way for you guys to figure out whether or not it is is to use, how can you check if something is accurate? How can you use, is to use a higher scale? How does that work? Well, what you would do is you modify your scale. You say, you know what? I'm going to plug into the 10 amp, I'm going to plug into the 10 amp um, socket. If you plug into the 10 amp socket, if it is 5 amps, then this needle should move here because this is where five is on our third scale. But you actually might find that it doesn't move there. You actually might find that it moves something like this. And that it was actually eight amps. It wasn't five amps at all, it was eight amps. The reason you didn't read eight amps on your scale is because it was maxed out. Exactly. Really good point. You and I really liked that terminology there. And that's one of the reasons why we often change between different scales is we can check it. Now you will be lucky with these kinds of ammies because if something's maxed out, it usually will actually go like this. You have five here and it will go past the five. We would say that that is off the scale because that's exactly, you know, and when you say something's off the scale, usually mean that's, wow, that's amazing. It's completely out there. That's exactly what we mean here. It's off the scale. So therefore, you know, it's probably more than five. But that's how we go about reading amp meters. And that's one of the important things about understanding about scale. Make sure that if you're using a scale, that you're using an appropriate scale. And an appropriate scale has an appropriate zero point, minimum value, and appropriate maximum. Um, we pretty much, oh, the last thing I wanted to talk to you guys, oh, okay.
So we've got one really key idea here, which is something about series and voltmeters and in series and parallel. And I wanted to quickly talk about this. Um, and you know what? I might talk about this last bit here first. Um, why do we use a voltmeter and an amp meter when we can calculate everything using Ohm's law? I just spent last the last three lessons showing you how you can go V equals IR and you can go, if I know V equals IR and I've got a battery here and I've got this amp meter here, we can calculate all the bits and pieces for it. So why would we ever need this? If I know the resistance of something and I know the voltage of it, I shouldn't need to use a voltmeter. The reason is this, because circuits don't always follow the rules. And that's going to be the big thing that we talk about next week when we come back to school is when circuits don't follow the rules. When a circuit doesn't follow the rules, we refer to it as non-ohmic. Don't copy this down. We're going to copy this down next week. Non-ohmic devices are, are, are essentially circuits that don't follow the rules. Plus, the other reason why we use voltmeters and ammeters is because if you've got a problem, maybe, for example, you've got a circuit and the diagram shows a circuit that looks like, uh, a circuit that looks like this. But then when you measure the circuit, it doesn't work. That might be because there might be a break in the circuit. And so therefore, this isn't working or something like that. And so therefore, you've got to check to figure out why is this not working, and so on and so forth. Um, and that's one of the reasons. The last thing I'm going to talk to you guys about, and I'm yes, for those of you that are saying, yelling at me, oh my God, sir, it's like 10.34, the 12.34, the bell's about to go. I am aware of that. I'm going to I'll talk about this last idea here. And this is perhaps a bit of a bonus idea, but it is this pretty challenging idea. Our meters need to be connected in series. And the question that I usually ask is why? And this is actually a, also something that I'm going to talk about here. I want to show you guys two circuits. Let's say we've got this circuit here. And we're going to measure the voltage through, oh, it's the bell. I'm going to finish this up really quickly then because the bell is about to go. See? This is just one thing that I want to show you guys and, and then we'll, I'll, I'll let you guys go. This idea here. So if I'm measuring the voltage through this circuit, this is all good. Everything works. But this one is really bad. Why is this really bad? The reason this is really bad and you should never hook up a circuit, an ammeter like this, is because this is hooking up an ammeter in parallel. You might say, okay, so what? Well, remember that in parallel, this ammeter has very low resistance. So if this ammeter has very, very low resistance, what you've actually made is a short circuit and we know that short circuits are bad about a third of the amp meters in the back room of the physics in physics and at this school don't work and i actually had to fix a bunch of voltmeters because of this problem Sorry. yeah some of the year 12s that were in year 10 two years ago broke it and that's because of this low resistance all of the current goes through here and it kills because it's essentially a short circuit it hit, gets a lot more circuit than it needs to and it dies and that is really bad news for the amp meter ultimately the amp meter just can't deal with it so that's why it kills it so you should always connect an amp meter and power in series Voltmeters doesn't really matter much, but if you connect a voltmeter in series, guess what? It's going to have such a high volt, it's going to have such a high resistance that this is going to go black. And actually, I've had students say to me, Oh, my circuit's broken. It's like, No, you connected a voltmeter here. This is going to have a voltage drop is huge. 
Anyway, ladies and gents, I'm sorry for keeping you guys longer than the time of gone. I've now 10 36 up. 12.36 on my watch, but my watch is obviously slow. I apologize for that. Ladies and gents, um, there's one thing in chat. Uh, the M meeting series stay the same and the Boston Parallel stay the same. Yeah, it's, you just got to be careful when you're connected. Um, but yeah, you, you have to put them in different places.